but get results. With regard to your participation in the show, we encourage you to call in on the numbers listed 1 869 469 1616 and or 1700. Here's a suggestion you have a question or a comment, perhaps you can get a pencil, a piece of paper, write it down so that you're well organized. And when you're getting on the show, you take as little time as possible so that we can accommodate as many of you as we can. We ask only, first of all, you respect yourselves and then respect others because we will not accept anything that we deem is not within our broadcast standards. But we encourage you to always be forceful with your point. You can also follow us on our live video stream of this program on our YouTube channel at Vaughn Radio and our Facebook page at Vaughn Radio. Thank you all again for joining us. Your voice in the community. Talk that gets results. Tonight, the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. We are with them again. We are always so happy to have them. And uh, we'll be... This is Financial Information Month, right? Okay, that's Financial Information Month in the month of October every year. Financial month as well. Huh? And credit Union Month as well. And Credit Union Month as well. You they, they celebrate around the same time, right? So I always remember that and it's always good to have the folks from the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union with us. And um, I am encouraging you to call somebody up and let them know that this program is on the air. Right? It may not be what everybody wants to hear, but everybody should hear. Right? Uh, in terms of what we're going to be talking about. Okay. So again, we thank you for joining us this evening. Mr. Sidney Newton, the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. He is the general manager. Mr. Newton, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Herbert. Good evening to the radio listeners and those following on other uh, platforms. Zavalicia, Miss Zavalicia Claxton is the internal auditor there at the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. That is, that name is almost as sophisticated as her job. <laughs> good evening and it's good to have you. Good evening, Mr. Herbert. It's a pleasure being here and good evening to the listening and viewing audience as well. And before I get in trouble, let me allow and ask the third person to tell us who you are. Hi, good night. My name is Martha Dukan. I am a customer service clerk or teller at the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. I would just like to say good night again and um, to all the listeners here tonight up on radio. You are a customer service clerk. Clerk. Yes. What I would call a teller. Mr. Newton, I always wonder why do they call that person who works and does that job a teller? They tell stories or what? <laughs> cash. Or do they talk about cash? They tell cash. I tell, okay, I always, uh, always wanted to know. A teller, so they talk about cash. Okay. All right, so it's again, it's so good to have everybody here this evening. And uh, we are in, as we said, Financial Information Month. And we're going to be talking about finances. Put another way, monies, right? Savings, spending, loans, and all those things that are connected to the money market. Am I correct? To some extent, yes. And uh, we have some other uh, information we, to share. We got other information to share. We will learn more about the credit, credit union. union movement in general, mm -hmm. and credit union in particular. The, you you are done about fifty years, right? Not so much. <laughs> you, no, I mean I mean the the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. Yes, that's right. Is, yes, is about yes. fifty. That is what we want to talk about. Right. Partly. Yes. Okay. So I know a little something, right? And um, you may not say this, but according to the ass assessment and the records and the evidence, the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, in our terms. Is a financial giant too, right? Definitely. Okay. A pillar of the of the financial system here in Nevis. Okay. So having done all that and breaking the ice, right? Why don't we begin with you first? 
Okay, Mr. Herbert uh, and the viewing and listening audience, the team that is assembled here this evening from the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, as you could see, is diverse um, in age and experience, and that is deliberately so, because um, we recognize that having uh, completed 50 years of service to the Nevision community and to, ex to the extent that uh, we have extended to St. Kitts as well, we believe that a few things are important in our continued operation. Uh, one is um, our sustainability. We must be able to continue for another 50 years. And our collaboration uh, with other credit unions and other stakeholders in the system. And our goals, maintaining our goal, that is to, to meet the needs of our members and to also do it in sync with the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals. And so we have, we have come to, to let the, the general public know, and our members in particular, some of the uh, achievements that we have made over the years, um, to talk about some of the activities that we have conducted throughout the year uh, so far, and then to zero in on the week of activities which is taking place uh, as I speak. So that's basically what we are going to do this evening. And uh, Ms. Claxton and Ms. Dukran are, are here to you know, assist in, in getting that information out. OK, so we, we got um, a, uh, you know, a, an area. Each person have a particular area. And they're going to make an opening comment or address in that regard. So why don't we do that? Okay. Hey, good morning. Sorry, good evening to everyone once again. I am going to zero in on the 50th anniversary celebrations at the NCCU. And I am going to take in the Administration, Member Services, and Human Resources Department. And in the Administration, Member Services, and Human Resources Department. And the winner of the slogan competition is myself, a part of the Internal Audit Department. The winning slogan for the 50th anniversary celebration is Consistency, Financial Security, Serving the Community, 50 Years of Development and Prosperity. We would have continued our celebrations by distributing care packages on a monthly basis. 47 packages were distributed during the period January to September. Packages were presented to our members, including some of our pioneers. We would have distributed packages to some mothers during the Mother's Day celebration, to some fathers during the Father's Day celebration, some small business owners, and long-serving members. For the month of October, the distribution continues, and we are distributing a total of 16 packages in October. These packages will be delivered to the retired teachers in celebration of Teachers Month. To date, a total of 63 care packages have been distributed, and we anticipate that at least 75 packages will be distributed by the end of the year. Another activity that has been undertaken is the relay competition. That was done on May 21st, 2022. We had 12 teams participating in that competition. And the top three places were first place, Extreme Velocity, second place, CSS Alliance, and third place, A1 Titans. The credit union would have awarded these teams cash prizes. We would have also done a square fear on July the 22nd. And the purpose of this square fear was to educate and recu recruit members at the same time. So we used it as an opportunity to educate and as a recruitment drive. In July, we commenced the sale of some anniversary t-shirts. And t-shirts are still available at the credit union for sale at $40 each. The proceeds from this the sales of these t-shirts would go towards the disaster relief fund at the credit union so it's for a worthy cause and we invite you to come and um, purchase your t-shirts 
On July 24th, we had an anniversary church service and that was done to kick off our 50th anniversary celebration during that week of our 50th anniversary celebration. The church service was held at the Taylor Memorial Wesleyan Holiness Church. We would also have had an appreciation cocktail for pioneers and volunteers on July the 27th. And a total of 96 individuals were awarded at this cocktail. We had our member appreciation as part of our week of activities as well. And uh, during that period, we would have distributed 50th anniversary tokens to our members, uh, um, along with some snack boxes. In terms of the coming activities, we are planning to release a commemorative documentary and magazine, and those releases would be done in short order with the documentary being done by November 2022 and the magazine by December 2022. We also have a quiz competition that is upcoming and that is slated for November 21st, 2022. This quiz competition would be for primary schools and it will be done in collaboration with S hey. yeah, So Sunday, October 16th, that I just it was the official opening of the Credit Union Week where we had a radio and the primary schools were St. James, Violet, the Viogen, sorry, St. Thomas's Primary School, Ivor Waters Primary School and Montessori. The presentations and donations, there were distribution of Pioneers and Volunteers Awards, awards distribution of care packages and tonight here we are at Vaughn Radio um, Wednesday tomorrow we have another visit to the primary schools and also the Gingerland Secondary School to spread more awareness and education and promotion JLPS, EPPS, CPS, MCP, NA and GSS also presentation and donations at the Alexandra Hospital. Thursday, the big day, which is International Credit Union Day, which is celebrated on the third Thursday of October um, 20th. We will visit the CSS and NI schools and CBI schools to spread awareness, education, and promotion. Schools CSS, NIS, and CBS. We'll have a radio and television address by our president of the NCCU, Mr. Chris Liebert. We'll also have quiz and giveaways, fun radio and Vision 2020 FM radio. Distribution to our pioneers and volunteer awards and also our care packages. On Friday, we'll have a health fair coordinated by Dr. Linton Liber Jr. in collaboration with the NIA Health Promotion Unit, which will take place from 9 to 1 p.m. And on Saturday, November 5th, we'll have a health walk, which will happen from Owali Beach Resort all the way to Nevis Credit Union's parking lot. The start time is at 5.30 a.m. Real early. Okay, so th th those are the activities um, uh, outlined for the 50th anniversary, which began in um, January of this year. We'll go down to December. And um, as part of the activity, we are having and celebrating International Credit Union uh, Week. I, I would like to say to all of the listeners, and especially if you are members of, uh, members of uh, one or more credit unions, that you are part of 375 million persons from 118 countries around the world who will be celebrating International Credit Union Day on Thursday. And you know, I'm sure by now, that the credit union movement is a very special um, organization. It's built on, on the principle of people helping people. And so as we pool our resources, we create funds that will help each other 
to achieve their their goals, their dreams. There is something very special about the credit union, which everybody should know, and that it is not a bank, although it is engaged in banking business, but it is very different. And there are a lot of things that the credit unions do that uh, commercial banks won't do because of the nature of the credit union. And the credit union also creates a, an, an avenue and an opportunity for, for persons to, you know, own, be a part of, and uh, help to develop and be developed by the credit union. It has a very uh, business model, and um, that makes it very, very unique. And so we invite everyone to become a part of the credit union movement, join the credit union, and discover the difference. You know, I am always intrigued. And if I ask this question once, I probably ask it a hundred times and maybe now a hundred and one. You get it that the nearest cooperative credit union, and you just explained it's a cooperative. Um, they have other cooperatives, I know, on the island. The Nevis Cooperative Credit Union has been going for 50 years, five decades. Five decades. And yet, there's a debate, an ongoing debate, that um, based on our culture, we do not cooperate to do this kind of thing. But the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union has done exactly that for 50 years. And that is always eludes me in terms of how did it happen? Well, <laughs> the, the, the philosophy, the philosophy is um, part of the, of, of the success, you know, the, the, the reason for its success. Um, for example, the principles, the philosophy and the principles. The, the, the credit union is a, is a democratic organization. It's not owned by any one person. It's owned by everybody who is, is a member. And each person has one vote. One member has one vote, no matter how much money they have in the system. So they, one cannot overrule the other because they think that they are bigger. Everybody has one vote. And um, there's some equality in um, presentation and representation. Uh, the credit union also gives people opportunity. And so persons join either to help themselves or to help others, right? Because in the credit union system, there are persons who are savers who don't borrow. And there are people who are borrowers who don't save. And so there is that symbiotic relationship between the two sets of uh, members. And significantly, the, 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 the credit union has in it in its philosophy um, a built-in sustainability you know, uh, mechanism where we, we, we look for the next generation to come along. And that's one of the reasons why we have this evening with us uh, Ms. Dukran, who is one of our youngest um, employees. Uh, when we think of the, 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 the pioneers, the chief pioneer, for example, Mr. Blackett, Mr. Blackett could have been my father. So he's first generation, I'm second generation. And Miss Tukran could be my daughter. So she's third generation. And we are looking for that next generation so that when the, the older ones move off the scene, the credit union continues. Mm -hmm. So it is built upon um, those principles that would engender sustainability. So who would chop off the hand that feed them? Support yourselves by supporting your credit union. And it is not just in even credit unions. Every credit union philosophy is the same. The principles are the same. But if you take those same philosophies and principles, though, and you put them to other groups, it doesn't seem to work. As um, with, with, the side, with the side of success story, of the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union and, as you said, um, maybe some other credit unions as well. And the same persons, though, that are members of the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, as per an example, they don't seem to have the confidence, if you will, to, let's say, join 
uh, Agriculture Cooperative Credit Union. Do you think one can attribute it then to the success of the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union to its credibility? And as you said, its um, sustainability over the years? I would say that education, member education is key as it relates to that. The Nevis Credit Union starts education and we have a few programs in place to educate our members. A process that may be as simple as a loan application. If a member doesn't qualify for a loan, we would guide them through the process, we would offer counseling, we would always go the extra mile to assist our members. So I would say that is one of the key areas that sets us apart and pushes us ahead in that area. And as a consequence, you think they feel very comfortable? Because, you know, um, we have societies, not just in Nevis, but in, in the, um, the Caribbean region, that they will tell you our people don't like to, to write. We don't like filling out forms. And I notice Mrs. Um, Claxton has just said that what we do, we help our people too. And that may sound simple, right? But that's something very important for persons feeling comfortable. So uh, I, I think maybe you just cleared up and uh, helped me to understand and I am sure uh, are the persons why you have such a success trail. Yeah, I think there are, there are other principles Webber, which are significant. So for example, besides um, being a democratic organization, um, membership is, is voluntary. Nobody is forced to. Um, and nobody is denied. There is no discrimination based on anything, race, gender, orientation, you know, religion, or anything. And so um, one joins the credit union because there is the commonality is either the bond or the fact that they can utilize, they can contribute to or utilize the services provided. And when we look back at, um, you know, where it's, it's, your, it's yours, you know, it's yours. Um, there's something else that, that the credit union does uh, besides what was mentioned about training, it's dormant. So we are trying to kickstart it again because we recognize that people do need support and help. And whenever there is need for either assistance for medical or uh, relief from some disaster, one of the first places that persons send a letter to ask for assistance is the credit union. Now, it belongs to everybody, but the money cannot just be taken up and given away. So we have to pay this fund and so on. Uh, we have supported scholarship programs in the school and um, just yesterday we gave five scholarships to the, to students of the Gingerland and secondary um, secondary schools the most in one year ever five um, and we are now up to 74 since the program started in 1986 uh, some 36 years ago and so we have given back to the con community we continue to give to the community because we are of the community so, um, you know, the credit union continues to play its role, and it's, we, we say it's not for profit. Um, not for profit, not for charity, but for service. And if we believe, we believe if we provide service in a way that people are happy with us, we will make not a profit, but a surplus. You're, you're, you're my commerce teacher, Mr. Herbert, so, you know, sometimes we say surplus and profit, but in the credit union, we don't use the word profit, we use surplus. It's the same thing, right? Well, the, well since you said I was your commerce teacher, <laughs> we, on the other side of profit was one. Loss. <laughs> so, is it a philosophy um, or a strategy to never use the other word? <laughs> Well, yeah, well, you know, the, what we're saying is that if, if the credit union does not make a, a profit or a surplus, it doesn't mean that it has failed because right. that money could have been channeled back into the people, mm -hmm. into the community. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, you know, uh, it is still doing um, what it is intended to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to, 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 to ask, in terms of the disaster relief program, 
um, and you said that when disaster hits, people will ask, was it something that was um, put in place to help members or the general population? Well, it was really members, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, we are of the community. So we, 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 we see everybody as a, as a member or a potential member. Mm -hmm. So you may not be a member, but we help you. And you say, boy, these are the people who help me, so I'm going to, I'm going to become a member. Okay. So, you know, one or the other, we, there's no loss in it. Mm -hmm. There's no loss in the process. Yes, Mrs. Claxton, you wanted to, to say something? Well, basically, I was um, going to respond and say the same thing, but Mr. Newton forced me to <laughs> it. We are all inclusive. Yes. There are times where, when we would get requests from persons who are not a part of our membership, but we don't discriminate in any way. Yeah. We allow certain persons to get certain opportunities. We understand that things happen, and so we give back as much as possible to the community. Okay. Um, in in terms of the the program and it's a program that you said you you're hoping to restart. Mm. Yes, okay. We had we had some challenges. Um, you know, uh, maybe the way it was rolled out initially um, caused some friction with the members. Um, but I think people have seen the the value of it. Uh, you know, things like the, the, the recent volcanic eruption in um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All of the credit unions in St. Kitts and Nevis came together under the umbrella of the League, which will be on in the next hour of the program. And we raised over $30,000 and we sent to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to our sister League over there for the benefit of the credit union um, members. Um, we have done that to other parts of the, you know, when disaster hits, hurricane and other things in other parts of the world. Because when Hugo affected us in 89, we were beneficiaries of that kind of support from other credit unions from across the Caribbean. So it is, it is, our, it is our philosophy that we all uh, espouse um, to give back to the community. And our community is not always the community where we actually live and reside. Because we are a community of the Caribbean credit union movement and they also are part of the World Council of Credit Unions around the world. So we have given, for example, when there was that bombing in, um, in, in, in Kenya, in Africa, and a few credit unions were, were in the building which collapsed and our, our members died there, we sent money to Africa to help the credit union through the World Council, you know, to get them back on their feet along with the other Caribbean credit unions. So that's part of the credit union system and operations. You know, I I'd always debate that your philosophy of life will determine your quality of life and the, the policy, policies and so on that people put in place because um, it's like saying that when you have a debate as to whether something is right or wrong or fair or not fair, it, it, it comes down to what you accept as fair. <laughs> And, uh, 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 you know, the point that you're making in terms of your outlook. And if you have a group in um, members who, who think that, you know, all of us are in this thing together. And so when you hurt, I hurt. Sorry. Then you, you have a, a, a different organization Sorry. as to opposed to one which says, I have nothing to do with that. I got to see how much profit I can make. Right. So I, I, I get it, and you know, again, I, I'm sure that a lot of folks will applaud the philosophy and understand the success. Not that, that is, some people are going to argue that that's the only way you can succeed, but it is, uh, especially in a Christian society, it is perhaps a preferred way. It is, and it's the best way, and look, the credit union is the people's organization, so if if the credit union succeeds, it means that the people are succeeding. And uh, we have seen that. You know where we have come from over the years. You know, the credit union has contributed to persons um, getting homes, sending their children to, to, to universities, building their own small businesses, and so many other things. And these were things that could not be attained before a certain time. 
I, I argue that the credit union put pressure on some of the big financial and foreign institutions to open the doors to the local and ordinary people. Because um, before the credit union really took off, persons were having real difficulties. And I, I understand from inside sources from one of those institutions that they studied the credit union system and wondered well, why is it people were going there? And they, they turned around and started beating us at our own game. <laughs> but um, we have a strategy to come back. People were coming there because you were not letting them in. You were shutting them out, right? Some, when I said you, yes. I mean yes. the yes. Um, conglomerates, yes. the, the, the big yes. institutions, right. because it, not so long ago, and that is why I was saying when uh, Ms. Claxton had mentioned the fact that they help the members, even if it's filling out the forms right. and stuff like that, it'll be, it'll be um, funny. People might figure, well, it, 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 too ashamed to say it, but our people do not like to fill out forms. And, and when I say our people, I'm talking about people who are well educated as well. And so sometimes when you when you get that sort of service, it goes a long way. Yes. And 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 then with some of the bigger institutions, then and still now. I remember recently they had a particular financial institution was quitting the scene. And I told someone as a member of. of of that as well and I told someone that the way those people are treating its customers showed clearly that they didn't, they're discouraging them from coming <laughs> <laughs> that is true okay so what what other area we, we've got okay um, you know um, like I said, we have we have with us one of our young uh, employees, and one of our strategy is really to reach the um, the young people. We we have a school. We support the school cooperatives project. We have been doing so for over twenty years, and um, the credit union, Nevis Credit Union, sponsors um, all of the schools, primary, government primary, and private schools. We have um, supported them with with technology. Uh, computers, um, software programs, and everything. And we have an officer who is assigned to them through an officer which the Ministry of Education recently appointed. And um, the idea really is to start, or not start, because it has happened, it has been happening for some time, to, to, to reinstill the, the, the importance of, of savings, thrift, in, in early years, and letting them know that there is a pathway to become a member of the credit union through the school cooperative, through the secondary school cooperative, into the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. And uh, when they arrive at that stage, they will be treated as if they were there for all the years that they were in the primary school cooperative and um, given the privileges of membership and the benefits of membership. And so, you know, with, with, with Martha here with us, um, you know, maybe she can say something to the young people, whether or not they should join the credit union or not. Of course. Of course, it's a really nice place to be. You know, it's always good to save and even better with the credit union, I must say myself. Imagine you're saving and you're getting back on your saving, which basically encourages you to save even more over the years of everything. We have a Christmas saving, special saving, and your Culturama saving that you can basically save up for that period of time which is a very I would say a very wise strategy because there's some people coming in and they didn't even know that they had wow that much yeah. there because it's just the act of saving it's very disciplined yeah. and it's just it's just very good to have a account at the credit union I would say and um, in addition to what both Mr. Newton and Martha would have just mentioned it's also a process mr newton started with the junior cooperative that is offered through the schools once the students leave the primary school they can then transition into a custodial account with us at the nevis credit union yeah. and then when they reach adulthood they can open 
a regular savings account. So it's a process and we have windows available, windows of opportunity available to accommodate the process. Then as a con consequence, they learn the financial system. That's right. And what, what it is to not only to save, but they learn about interest. Yeah. And then they also learn about how to get something uh, and uh, on credit, for instance, and then payback and stuff like that. And once you're incorporated into the whole system now in the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, you become a member. At the age of 16. Right. And then you understand about investment and dividends. Right? Right. That's right. That's right. Now, that's on the savings side. Now, there's something that happens on the loan and the lending side, which is known in the credit union um, movement worldwide as the best kept secret. It is the best thing that ever happened to a credit union member, but it is the best kept secret because we don't talk about it. Why? Be because it happens to be associated with death, and nobody likes to talk about death or dying. So, for example, there has always been um, a product offered by one of our, well, our, our international insurers of credit unions called CUNA, where um, a credit union will insure the, the loans of its members up to an amount. And if the, if the member dies before repaying the loan, and it's within that loan amount, the debt dies with the debtor. The credit union makes an application and the debt is paid off. Now, a lot of members do not seem to know that. And um, that is why it is called the best kept secret. But um, that is significant to the credit union's philosophy it's, 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 and its practice. And it is also significant to the members as a benefit. I mean, I, I said to the staff a few days ago that um, one of our members, you know, unfortunately lost her husband and um, we made application and you know when it was explained to the member all the member could have said was wow so this thing is automatic automatic mm -hmm. the credit union pays for it for the benefit of the member okay so let's do a, a hypothetical so i have a loan at the nevis cooperative credit union let's say twenty thousand 50,000, 20,000, right? And so I just go through the process and I'm paying back for the loan all the time. And uh, something happens. And then, well, I'm using a bad example because <laughs> the example is leading me now to say that I die. <laughs> so I die. <laughs> That's the bad part. <laughs> so, my estate doesn't have to worry, have to worry. about that 50000 and no. And I didn't really have to separately go and to insure the, that no. by, by paying. That, that's credit union maybe that's, maybe that's really a wow. Yeah. And, it's a, it, and, 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 and although people, we have, it's, it's on our annual report for the last quarter of a century. It's on the back cover. Right? But somehow, people read it and they seem not to understand it. Or maybe they prefer not to understand it as I <laughs> didn't want to continue with my example. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, um, it works. Yes. You know, it definitely works for the benefit of um, those who are left behind. And, um, you know, those are things that the credit union do because credit union is, like I said, not just a financial institution out, out to make profit. It's a social organization about how to help the members improve their quality of life. And, um, you know, that among other social interventions that we have um, in the system makes the credit union unique and the members you know getting the benefits that they do not actually have to put their hands in the pocket to pay for if you're just joining us we're speaking with members of the nevis cooperative credit union and they're celebrating uh their uh, month is it a month it's a week. A week, a week yeah. of activities. Now, earlier we had run down some of the activities. Maybe it's a good time as we're getting um, 
you know, towards the f end of the first segment to remind folks about that. Okay, so I'll recap the week of activities in celebration of International Credit Union Week 2022. On Sunday, we started the week with an official official opening of credit union with a radio and television address that was done by the federal minister responsible for credit unions also on saturday there was a church service that church service was held at crossroad community church on monday october 17th the credit union the nevis cooperative credit union limited made a few presentations the presentations were made to a total of five new scholarship awardees from both the Charleston Secondary and Gingerland Secondary Schools. The credit union would have also given dona donations to the Senior C Citizens Division of the Social Services Department, along with Pink Lily Cancer Care Foundation. On Tuesday, and that is today, some of our staff would have visited the primary schools on Nevis to raise awareness and education. We would have also done some presentations and distributions of awards to pioneers and volunteers and distributed some care packages today. And this evening, we are part of the Let's Talk program. Tomorrow, Wednesday, October 19th, we would continue our visits to the primary and secondary schools to, once again, raise awareness and to educate the students of these schools. We would also do a presentation at the Alexandria Hospital on Thursday, October 20th, which will be celebrated at International Credit Union Day. We would continue our visits to the primary schools and that would be our final visit to both primary and secondary schools. We would also have a radio and television address by our president who is Mr. Chris Liber. And there would also be some quizzes via Von Radio Vision 2020 FM radio. The distribution of pioneers and volunteers awards and care packages will also continue on Thursday. On Friday, there will be a health fair, and that would be in collaboration with the Nevis Health Promotion Unit. That health fair would be coordinated by Dr. Linton Liber Jr. And it would run from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. On Saturday, November the 5th, that will be our final activity and um, although it would not fall in the month of October for various reasons, we will continue with our health walk November the 5th and the route that we are taking for the health walk is from Orly Beach to NCCU's parking lot and persons are asked to gather at Orly Beach at 5.30 a.m. Yes, Mabel, um, before, before I, I wrap up finally, I just want to emphasize that um, the credit union also espoused um, a principle, follow a principle of cooperation among cooperatives. Um, it speaks to our collaboration because we are not um, f fully equipped units. Uh, all of the credit unions um, cooperate with each other and various things and so I would always and uh, use the opportunity to, to thank our partners who help us deliver products and services to our members you know um, it might seem a little funny to say that one of our one of our uh, best partner longest partner in the business is the Bank of Nevis Limited and somebody will say but they're your competitors but I said no they're our partners all right because without them, there are certain uh, things that we offer, products and services that we would not be able to offer because we must go through a bank and things like that. And we have other partners in the country in various areas of our operations, as well as our credit union, uh, credit sister and brother and sister credit unions across mm -hmm. in St. Kitts, St. Kitts Credit Union and um, Police, Police, Police Credit Union and St. Patrick's in Montserrat and so on. Where we, our members can go to them 
and uh, get access to their account in Nevis Credit Union seamlessly because of a, a, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding that we have, you know, between ourselves and so on. So um, the, the credit union movement acknowledges, recognizes its limitations, and we, um, we work together to achieve the goals so that we can serve our collective memberships. And so, I, you know, I just want to always recognize that partnership and to thank them for partnering with us over the years. And the last point that you made, Mr. Newton, again, it, it speaks to the philosophy that you, you spoke about at the beginning, and then the alternate philosophy of war. <laughs> well, well, you, you know, you're indicating that some people wonder, well, how could you... you, you right. be, and, and, and it's a very important point, I think, in terms of, again, the philosophy of life, yeah. uh, where people think that because you... Um, are competing, then you have to hate and and right. and and um, destroy. Right. And so, it, I I pointed it out because I, I think it, as part of education, yeah, as not in finance alone, but in the society in and yeah. life, yeah, it is very important. And you know, I always enjoy doing a discussion like this one. Most people probably don't, and that is why I would always say it is necessary if we are going to again advance as a society based on the philosophy and the role that we choose and how we choose, you, you know, intend to get there. That's right. So, you know, um, our brothers and sisters from uh, from the other credit unions will, will, will join the program shortly, but I just want to thank you on behalf of, of the board and management staff and the general membership of the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. Um, you have been our partners. Von Radio has been our partner for as long as I know Von Radio has been here. And, um, you know, we appreciate, you know, you always are allowing us the opportunity to come on, on, um, on here. To, to spread the message. Uh, you know, we are a bit more fortunate than our pioneers, Mr. Blackett and, and Mrs. Dyer and Aunt Mai and those people of blessed memory who said that they used to have to go around Nevis using hurricane lamps, going to various schools and, and um, you know, uh, centers to spread the word. Well, we have a different means of doing it to, to, to advancement in technology. So we are here and we are hoping that the, um, the general public and the members at large are hearing us and taking, up, um, taking in the information and that we will see them at our office um, tomorrow or later in the week or later in the year, you know, with the interest of joining the credit union because the credit union is the organization, is our organization and it's here to stay. And um, how is the success of your feeder program that you you, um, um, you mentioned earlier where you're going to the schools and you have these programs and stuff like that? Is it um, one of the reasons why the, the credit union keeps um, expanding and going? As a matter of fact, um, one of the persons who should have been on the program this evening is, uh, is our president, Chris Leibert. Who is um, who was an intern at the credit union when he left when he was in sixth form? When he left sixth form, he became an employee, and we said we did not, he did not have to go through the interview process. We saw what he did when he was an intern, and we went and we handpicked him and bring him in. Uh, he came in, and after a year, he went off to university, studied law. He came back, and we sorted him out again. We said, "Look, you're a good man for the board." And he accepted, and today he's the president. At age 31, he's the third youngest president of the credit union and probably the youngest in the Caribbean at this point in time. So, and, and that is because we are looking at sustainability, future of the credit union. You know, when we, when we move off the scene, the credit union must continue, just like Mr. Blackett and the others who are resting in, you know, in blessed memory, you know, the credit union is continued. So that is a strategy and we are hoping that the young people um, We'll, we'll hear and understand the message from them, maybe not from me, but from the younger persons like Martha and Chris and the others, and move the credit union on for another 50 years. And that's not enough. We'll bring out <laughs> <laughs> uh, your final words. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, I too would like to um, echo the sentiments of Mr. Newton. And in addition to that, I would like to encourage you to become a member of the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union Limited if you haven't done so as yet. I'm sending out a special appeal to the young people. Join the credit union. We have many benefits to offer and you won't be disappointed. Thank you, Mr. Herbert, for having us on your show tonight. Um, thank you again for the opportunity to tell the people of Nevis what the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union is all about. Once again, to the young people, as I am one myself, I strongly urge you to become a member. You won't. You definitely won't regret it. You see. Thank you so much. I could come a member too? Of course. You, you should have been already, huh? I'm sorry. I seems like I have to be in the form to you, Mr. Albert, um, in the morning. The, uh, your last PRO told me that she will. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have to say what happened, right? <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, as usual, as, as, uh, and as I said before. Always look forward to having you. And um, it is one of, believe it or not, one of the, the better times that uh, you know I do this show because uh, as I said the philosophy that you use I think is a good philosophy of life thank you again and uh, s me, Mr. Uh, Sidney Newton who is the general manager Zavalicia Claxton is the internal auditor and Martha Dukan is it Dukan? yes okay uh, is a customer service rep teller who does cash <laughs> <laughs> That's that that's funny? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back with the second segment of the program right now for these. Builders Paradise is offering a large variety of floor and wall tiles at very competitive prices. Builders Paradise has over 2 million pieces in stock, lots of different styles to choose from. Whether you're renovating or tiling a new house, Builders Paradise has what you need. Wow! Oh, and remember, we're open all day Saturday to serve you better. This is something that you can't refuse. Visit Builders Paradise today at the CA Paul Saltwell Industrial Site in St. Kitts or call them at 466-4938. on this episode, the second segment of this episode of Thought That Get Results, the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union with uh, manager Sidney Newton was uh, um, Zavilicia Claxon, internal auditor, and Martha Dukan, customer service representative, were the first uh, guest on the first half of the program. Second segment of this program on the same topic. But this time, we've got uh, representing the St. Kitts and Nevis National Cooperative League, Mrs. Vernicia Walters. Good evening, and it is good to have you. Good evening, Mr. Herbert. Uh, Mr. Shakim Paris is a representative of the first federal cooperative credit union. It is good to have you, sir. Good evening, it's good to be here. And uh, Mr. Sidney Newton normally wears many hats. This evening he's wearing two. He is the representative in this segment of the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. Mr. Newton again, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Um, good evening to the listening audience. Okay, as we, you, you know, we, we did in the first segment, we are now speaking about the first segment we looked at the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union. This segment, the St. Kitts and Nevis National Cooperative, 
uh, league each person obviously have a particular area they are represented representing and w why don't we get some um, comments and letting the folks know the public the listeners know um, what you do in that organization and so on then we get into the full discussion why don't we begin with uh, the secretary of the board mrs walters good evening to all of our listeners here in St. Kitts Nevis and the wider community. I am Mrs. Vernicia Walters representing the Nevis, the St. Kitts Nevis National Cooperative League, where I currently sit as secretary and I'm also a director representing the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union on, um, at that level. We're here this evening to share a bit with all of our listeners. Um, the credit union movement, the successes, the growth, the uh, what's happening at our various credit unions, why you should become a member, the difference between the credit union movement and the commercial uh, sector. And I'm sure you would have heard quite a bit of that earlier. So um, I definitely am happy that uh, quite a bit of that has already been shared with our public but of course we have um, uh, other members here who can also uh, add to what was previously shared we should have somebody here from the police hopefully that person would come in at some point so we can hear a little bit about what's happening at the police uh, unfortunately uh, St. Kitts Cooperative Credit Union would not have somebody represented this evening but hopefully in the future uh, we will have somebody here uh, to represent St. Kitts so we can hear a little bit about what's happening at the St. Kitts Cooperative Credit Union. So I will now pass on to Mr. Paris. Okay, good evening once again. Um, as Mr. Herbert mentioned before, my name is Shakim Paris and I am a member services associate at the First Federal Credit Union. Uh, basically, I'm a teller. Um, I've been there for five years and my duty here tonight is to just um, inform the general public of the activities of the First Federal Credit Union for Credit Union Week. And Mr. Herbert, um, representing the Navy's Cooperative Credit Union, basically we are, we are one of four affiliates of the St. Kitts and Navy's National Cooperative League. And um, you know we, we we have been there from the foundation, and we are happy to be a part of the organization. Maybe I could go back a little bit and, and say that um, the league, the National Cooperative League, is the apex body for credit unions and cooperatives in St. Kitts and Nevis, and um, it's affiliated to the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Unions which has 17 members across the Caribbean, from Guyana in the south to Bermuda in the north, Belize in the west. And um, the Caribbean Confederation is affiliated to the World Council of Credit Unions, which um, is headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin, in the USA. And so we are part of this really large body of credit union members, and it is that body which has established Credit Union Week, which we all celebrate this week. So I'm happy to be here in this capacity okay so why don't we get into just as we did earlier the the, the St. Kitts and Nevis Cooperative Credit uh, Cooperative League tell us what that is all about and 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 so on so why don't we begin there all right so the St. Kitts Nevis National Cooperative League is the umbrella body of the credit unions in the Federation and as Mr. Newton would have mentioned earlier that there are currently four affiliates uh, the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, St. Kitts Cooperative Credit Union, First Federal Cooperative Credit Union, and Police Cooperative Credit Union. Our purpose is to give support to all of our affiliates uh, through developmental training, uh, financial support in certain capacities. Um, we are here to provide advocacy, which means for issues that are affecting the movement that is common to all of the credit unions we would represent uh, the the movement um, if, if it's a governmental body we do that or you know 
escalating you know challenges up the chain through the the triple CEO, which is the Caribbean Confederate of Credit Unions, up to the World Council. So our job really is to support um, all the credit, the four credit unions, and also to collaborate. Collaboration is is a very significant um, factor for for the league because we would recognize that we are small um, in terms of you know assets when compared to other institutions we are small in numbers uh, when it compared when compared to um, other institution and we we by ourselves we may not be able to advance certain things we might not be able to get certain laws amended certain legislative changes and so forth but coming together and combining our efforts um, as one body you know would allow us to to get certain things implemented, changed, and, and affected, um, and implemented in our societies. What is, is interesting about that, and, and coming off what Mr. Newton had indicated in the first segment, is this cooperation, which does not um, lend itself to what normally happens in the society, where people will be amazed because I operate a credit union, for instance. Let's say the, maybe you, you had mentioned earlier the police cooperative credit union. And then um, you have the Nevis cooperative credit union. And you're here telling us that you all work together well because y by yourself you may not be able to achieve certain things. Right. But together you can. In the Caribbean, you have been hearing this um, philosophy suggested with CARICOM, the OECS, and so on and so forth. And then there's always a debate as to whether or not it works because each unit, after the, the famous um, lyrics that says, they sign the treaty and they drink the whiskey. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to highlight that again because it speaks to a success where that ideology or philosophy actually works. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't hear it and I don't think that we can say it too many times to show that it can really work. And then why does it work? Because in the Police Cooperative Credit Union and the Navy's Cooperative Credit Union and, and the others and so on and so forth are some of the same people who are in the other organizations. Yeah, I mean, there are so many examples. I mean, like Mr. Newt would have said earlier, that we are not even just here in St. Kitts Nevis. You know, the credit union movement is a worldwide movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you would hear a lot about, let me say, for example, you might hear about Scotia Bank. And you hear there's a Scotia in Canada, there's a Scotia in the VI, there's one here, there's one there, and you hear about these all the time. And you may not hear about the credit unions because we are small. We, you know, we we are more focused on helping each other and you know helping the smaller man in the communities and so forth. And on worldwide scales, you have um, people who are coming together, for example, in agriculture in places like um, Brazil, you know, um, Belize, you know, in these places, coming together and being supported by the, the credit union movement at the highest levels to be able to implement agricultural um, um, development you know, moving products, moving services. So, so here's the question for you and perhaps even and Mr. Newton as well. Development. And you have the credit unions in a lot of the islands with their model, with their philosophy. And then you have the different islands in the Caribbean who struggle to get development, right? Mm -hmm. Projects and all that. And then sometimes you hear that some of the same people in our islands that join the credit unions who are part of cooperatives, 
then they do not cooperate to pool resources together to do the same development. And, 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 and that is the, 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 the thing that we're, um, I'm still intrigued about as to why um, people are joining and put in their resources in the nearest cooperative credit union, the police cooperative credit union, um, working with me in that union, but not seemingly willing to work with me to do a hotel. Other things. Other things, yeah. <laughs> That's a good observation. Um, I don't have the answers to it, but I think it has a lot to do with mentality mm -hmm. and structure and trust. Um, the, the credit union movement is a well-structured movement and uh, it's transparent. So, you know, there are no big fish and small fish, if, uh, if I may put it that way. As you would have heard earlier that it's one man, one vote. Each person is a member, is an owner of the credit union. And if you find yourself in certain situations and the credit union can assist, they work with you you know in in developing whether it's a small business or you know building a home education or you know you have certain challenges medical issues and you need support and stuff like that you know we come together and 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 we do that um outside of the movement like i said maybe one of the issues has to do with structure um mentality and trust you have to be able to trust the persons who you are working with if you are going to be collaborating and pulling your resources together. So, so you think that when I make my case and I ask people to work with me, you think when they don't, maybe they don't trust, trust me? That could be it. And, and on the contrary, when they do, they have confidence and trust in me. Definitely. Okay. And the Navy's Cooperative Credit Union has been around for 50 years, saying it's 40 years. Um, first federal about? 13. 13 years. Police? 20, 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. So we have a proven record of you know assisting and working with persons in our community so you know there is that level of trust and confidence in 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 what we do mm -hmm. mr newton yeah that's a, that's a, a point um, well made the credit union is built upon trust um it, it is part of the the the, the bedrock the philosophy of equity equality democracy uh, and things like that um it's all about human development it's not about um, you know upmanship it's about helping people to e be elevated above the levels and 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 the, in some societies the only institution that people know that will help them to pull themselves up is a credit union I mean especially you know some far out countries from the metropolitan centers of, of the world the credit unions are there and as uh, Mrs. Walters mentioned earlier on um, there are 86,000 credit unions around the world there might be about uh, a few hundred of um, branches of a, of a commercial bank but there are 80 plus thousand 86,000 credit unions and although each one is autonomous we have a link with each other through our various apex bodies whether it's the National Cooperative League, to the Confederation, to the World Council. And every year, the World Council comes together, and every region of the world have a, an apex body, a federation or a confederation, and they meet. And so the issues that are common to every credit union member, whether it's in Asia, Africa, Europe, Caribbean, you know, are, are discussed. And, you know, at the World Council level, um, we have representation to the to the um, the Basel, what do you call it? The Basel, the Basel uh, accounting, accounting uh, boards and so on. Yeah. yeah. So so where where we find um, you know accounting standards, standards being established and they are going to affect credit unions and and, and um, smaller businesses, you know, um, the World Council will intervene on their behalf. Which they did. So are we right? Which they did during yeah. the um, the pandemic. Right. You know, we yeah. they would have um, come together and they would have made representation on behalf of the movement, and they would have uh, written a memo 
um, and send it out where we could have gone to our local um, regulators, you know, um, and advocating for, you know, some relief and, and, and some, you know, support, you know, um, based on, you know, that support that we were getting from, from the World Council level. So, and that was, that was very um, strategic, um, not just for us here, but, you know, around the world, you know. So, so during the pandemic, um, <coughs> you know, I don't know of any credit union that went through the cracks, yeah, fell through the cracks, or went under, because we support each other and we were supported by our apex bodies. Um, we're working with uh, regulators and, and so on. So, the, you know, the underpinning thing really, as was mentioned earlier, is about people development, human development. And that is why I mentioned earlier that um, the credit union movement is in sync with the United Nations um, um, we call it development goals. Sustainable, Sustainable goals. development goals. In 2012, the United Nations declared the year to be the year of cooperatives, and the sustainable goals were were were, were arrived at developed two years later. So the co cooperatives have made an impact in even in the United Nations, and it is felt even now. You know many years after how would you describe the the growth uh, in terms of the, the the rate or the pace for the credit unions especially in the caribbean do you do you do you find that that um in terms of uh, membership there the a lot of people year to year uh, becoming part of cooperative credit unions? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, 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 the rate is, 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 is uh, varied in different countries. Um, it depends on your population. Um, but it is varied and there is high growth in some countries. There is moderate growth in others and there is low growth. On an average though it is um, you know double digit growth. And, and that is because people you know, understand the philosophy and gravitate towards it. But what we have found in the last couple of years in the in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union area is that with the departure of those um, foreign commercial banks, the, the the growth of the credit union has skyrocketed in in some countries, in particular, say Antigua and Barbuda, and um, you know, other parts of the of the of the OECS. Even here, I think as a neighbors, we have experienced growth because persons have moved their business to the few limited, the few remaining financial institutions which exist. That, that those are the local indigenous banks and the credit unions, and so there are more credit unions in the OACS than indigenous banks, and that is why Governor of the Central Bank, you know, Mr. Anthony uh, mm -hmm. Antoine. Uh, has has been espousing the policy that you have to bring the credit unions in because we are part of the system, whether people like it or not. Mm -hmm. The credit unions is a uh, part of the financial system. And and most of the the um, the customers at those same institutions uh, were to come to a cooperative credit unions, for instance, such as the Navy's cooperative credit union you perhaps can provide most if not all of the services that they normally need um, a, a lot not all because uh, as i said earlier in the earlier segment the, the credit union is not a bank so there are certain services that we cannot provide and we really need the bank to do that but the majority and especially for the average person most of the um, services that they would need the credit unions can provide them one of the credit unions that has experienced significant growth in the OECS is, is First Federal Credit Union, who is represented here by Mr. Paris. Over the last five years, I'm sure he could tell you that they have grown faster than any other credit union in the Car in the OECS. So there is experience of significant growth. So why have they grown faster than anybody well, He would be the best person to tell you. That's, that's <laughs> who am I. <laughs> so, um, well, Simply put, uh, the first federal credit union then was the FND credit union, which was the foundation for national development. 
Um, what I would say that caused us to experience such large growth over the years would be the marketing department that we implemented a couple of years ago. Um, before time, we really didn't have a marketing department. And now we do have an established marketing department. We have pushed most of our products uh, to the general public, uh, some of which persons were not aware of. I know they are aware of these products and services that we do offer. Uh, people come to the First Federal Credit Union uh, very fast to start uh, savings or to take loans, uh, whatever the case may be. So that, that's so that's um, exactly what I'm speaking about, and you said that uh, attributed maybe larger to your marketing department, mm -hmm. and this is part of what marketing is all about. So you have some listeners now, and that is why I ask a question: if a lot of the services that somebody was at a particular bank that is leaving or just left, would you say you can come? to the credit union because we can offer you most if not all of the services. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and most small business and so on, you can provide services for them, right? Yes. In a personalized, comfortable environment where they do not feel intimidated mm -hmm. simply because the credit union is theirs. They are part owner. So they should feel they feel at home. Okay. I'm gonna ask you a very difficult question yeah. which is very simple <laughs> <laughs> um, why, why it's difficult is because it's a question that a lot of people don't answer honestly so here's a question when you say about the service right and so on in the comfortable make you feel comfortable and all that what you just said does it really happen Yes. Yes, it does. You know, <coughs> we, the, the, I don't think the, any credit union will tell its members do not have business, do not do business with any other financial institution. I do not know if any credit union does that. We encourage our members, you know, to spread their wings, become members of other credit unions and financial institutions as well. But our, our vision is basically do most of your business with your credit union, which is the nearest credit union. Uh, because we don't believe in putting all of your eggs in one basket, you know. And um, I think that's, that's what drives us, and we encourage collaboration. There was a time when to join another credit union had a lot of red tape, but to go to another bank, there's none. And so we have been trying to work around these kinds of situations, and making sure that the regulators are on board with us, that there's nothing wrong in having a, a person having dual or triple membership in a credit union. It is like keeping a, a savings account. Although it is different in the sense that every member, every member is recorded as a member, separate and apart, you know, for, for purposes of uh, membership, you know, international, local, and so on. But um, we encourage membership in various different credit unions so that, um, you know, a person could spread their risk and get the benefits of all. Because some credit unions offer certain services which others don't. And, um, you know, we, we are really about the members. And um, it will help them, so it will help us. I think Mr. Paris can yeah. answer. Yeah. Are your, your members comfortable and feel at home at First Federal? They are very much comfortable and feel at home at the First Federal Credit Union. Um, I can say uh, for the f five years that I've been at the First Federal Credit Union, um, we have seen a number of business accounts come to the First Federal Credit Union and um, we basically offer, you could say, one-on-one -on -one with the business owner owners in terms of like, you know, how to go about saving and, and, and um, getting loans for their businesses. Uh, another thing we do, 
well, I don't know if most persons know in the public, but um, our tagline is basically we say yes. So uh, separate and apart from business um, owners, we do have personal person, well, people who come for personal loans. Um, we they think that uh, the first federal can't assist. We try to tailor. Uh, their financial needs in such a way that we can actually accommodate them with the loan that they are looking. So I would say um, the, our members are very much comfortable at the First Federal Credit Union. Our turnaround time is very fast and we are very efficient. So, yeah. A turnaround time. Yes, we try to approve our loans within, uh, you could say, three business days. Oh really? Yes. And all, how about the turnaround time for um, daily service? You pay attention to that as well? Yes, we do. Um, I've never had a complaint from any of my members as to if they ever had to wait in the line at First Federal for an extended period of time. So. Uh, and I can speak for myself because I am the teller at First Federal. So um, the turnaround time in terms of services, deposit withdrawals, opening accounts, it's very fast at the First Federal Credit Union. Oh, really? Yes. N well, Maybe it's time for a light moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I interviewed some persons once of a particular organization. And you know, everybody has, see, like how he just um, explained his turnaround time. Great service. It translates into that, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it put simply great service. So um, I said to the person who we were have been, you know, discussion with, they do great service. And I said, well, we have emergency numbers. Why don't you let me call one now? Live. They said, please don't. <laughs> uh, I was going to chime in. I was going to say that... Um, there's no perfect system. Um, there's no perfect structure. And uh, of course, you will always find, you know, a dissatisfied customer or member somewhere in between. Um, you'll find, you know, that there may be times where, you know, we drop the ball. You know, um, these things happen. But it is for us to learn from them, grow from them make the necessary changes and adjust you know to make sure that we don't repeat these things or to make sure that our you know our members are happy they're comfortable we do the best we can and sometimes you do the best you can and people are still not happy still dissatisfied for whatever reason but at the end of the day once you know that you're meeting the objectives and you're doing you know the best that you can in a circumstance that is all that we ask for I, I, do, I to be frank I don't know why people get defensive and so on when it comes to this I've said uh, if I said it once I said it a hundred times about us here at Vaughn Radio I tell people we offer great service and I said if you ever come and you don't get good service let me know because I guarantee you will mm -hmm. and then I, as you said you may get a complaint here and there and you address it. So if, if, if you're going to be offering great service and you're afraid to tell people if you didn't get great service, let me know. It means somebody's bluffing, right? right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Paris, I'm very impressed with the fact that you hardly get complaints about your turnaround <laughs> time. <laughs> the turnaround time on a daily basis mm -hmm. because well I, I think audience the, the phones are now back up 
we had some issues all day um, with, with, with the phone, lime, yeah, yeah with, with mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've just been told that they're they're back on stream now, but um, if you were to get some responses from the general public in reference to a lot of these institutions and the turnaround time, mm -hmm. it does not um, coincide with what is advertised. Well, the, the, the wait in line, the waiting time in line, it's attributed to a few things. Uh, mostly, I would say, technology, access to technology, and the use of technology. What we find is that um, some, we have members who are still not comfortable using the ATM machine. So you you can have uh, you have access to an ATM card. You don't have to come in the line. You can go to the machine and you can you know make your withdrawals there. We have boxes on the inside where you can write up your slips and so forth, and you can put it in that box instead of standing in the line. But for whatever reason, they still prefer to stand in the line, and then it takes a while. And if you're doing business and you're at the counter for 20 minutes, then each person behind you have to wait for an extra 20 minutes. So we have, th there are some persons who are still not comfortable with the technology. You have online banking as well, where you can monitor your accounts online. You can transfer between your accounts online. So if you have a checking account and you want to transfer funds from your savings to your checking, you don't have to come into the, 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 the credit union to do that. You can do that online. But still, persons come inside of the institution to do that. So that's one. Two... Um, well, of course, our movement is a little bit slow when it comes to technology, implementation of new technology, and mostly because of cost. Implementing new technology is very expensive. It's, you know, it, it takes a lot of resources to do that. So it takes time to implement. So we are basically playing catch up, um, but we are almost there. Most of our credit unions are trying to um, have either credit cards or debit cards or both um, you know so that our members can have even greater access to their resources and that would help one with service and it will help with you know turnaround time um, also as it relates to completing application forms for either becoming a member or you know applying for a loan and so forth these are things that we are looking at you know um, digitalizing you know to kind of help the process and to also improve our processes internally using technology so it will help to make our um, delivery of service more efficient so we are getting there um, we, are, we are there in some areas and we are getting there in others yeah uh, I thank you for that I always wanted to hear an explanation to that query or question because everybody asks it and I get it where you say that um, there, there are al alternatives including the ATM machine and stuff like that but still though the lingering question I get it that a person can go online they can go to the ATM etc but still the person who stands in line why is it that it takes so long when people argue that the same technology is it may not be at the top of the zenith right but it is much farther in terms of speed than we were maybe 25 years ago so well, why, I, why what, what would be the explanation why people I, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that. What we have is more people doing business. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so, so that's we have yeah. more people oh, doing okay. business. Mm -hmm. So if you come in, let's say, early in the morning and the institution opens at 8 o'clock and you come and you see 20 people ahead of you or 30 people ahead of you, then you have to wait for the 30 people ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not that we are that far, but it's more people who are coming in that's doing business mm -hmm. with us. So that's and they're doing different types of businesses because we have business people, we have, you know, persons who are dealing with loans, you know, did various different services. So it's more people that's coming in. So that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I, I'm going to share it and some people are getting it now because I hear it all the time. 
I asked the question of myself as well and never got an answer, so thank you again. The reason why people wait so long in the lines at the banks these days is because there's more customers, more business. Definitely. Okay. And what about there is um, <coughs> the element of the, on the lending side, um, you know, the, the turnaround time in relation to that, something that, something, something that people uh, usually miss. Um, there's a clause, you know, which always comes over in the advertisement, special conditions apply. So when a loan, when, when a request meets all of the conditions, the turnaround time is fast. When it doesn't, then, you know, it can extend to days, to weeks, to months, depending on how fast the, the member, the customer, turns around. A lot of it sometimes depends on the, on, on the, um, on the customer turning around. So the the um, the fallacy that the persons who are serving now are much slower. Not true. No, not at all. A as a matter of fact, we track the um, number of transactions done by our tellers on a daily basis, and I'm telling you, it's running. We have about three, four tellers, and it's running nearly every one of them over a thousand a mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that is not true at all. But but that, but that's you see that, that's the the purpose of things like these, to to ask the questions and you get what the reality is and not what somebody figures it is. You, you see what I'm saying? Because I'm sure all of you have heard the the complaints. And from the, the the rich content of Mrs. Walter's answer, it seems as if she was prepared for it as well, <laughs> you know, in terms of, of the answer. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for it. Because um, I, I honestly was one who was wondering, why is it taking so long, you know? Well, I, I'm not at a particular institution. It's not a credit union where some time ago, you know, the tellers were pretty fast, you know, in doing certain things. And I think it had to, a lot to do with confidence. Um, okay. Where once you've been doing something... By the way, when I was asking the question, I wasn't being specific to credit, credit unions. Un generally. General, generally right. speaking, in terms of financial institutions. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. On. So, um, yes, yeah, so I think it also has to do with confidence. Mm -hmm. To me, um, some of the the older tellers well who are older now who were tellers then were more confident they were more confident in terms of counting the cash and so forth so they're not counting it two three four and five times mm -hmm. you know you count it one two boom you're good you know um you know they they, they knew their work they okay. knew the, the trunk code so they didn't have to keep looking up to see which code to use for what you know so these things you know came a second nature and they were sharp and they were on the ball they knew the processes they knew the procedures they knew what was required for different transactions and so forth so they were able to flow you know and and that's 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 significant so in the absence of that then you can have the lag time right and it is in some instances that normally is the cause yes if, if you're not confident in what you're doing and if you don't know your job, if you're not knowledgeable and if you're not, you know, certain, you know, of what you're doing, then it you, would, it you would take more time to kind of dot your I's and cross your T's. So, and so it is yeah. fair to say then that not in all, but in some of the instances where the public is querying and frustrated, that answer you just gave applies is yes but whether the the technology has also improved to assist the process you know the, the being speeded up so for example um there are cash counters so you don't have to count the cash on your to your fingers you know you could rely on the cash counters and 99.99 percent .99 the time correct, yeah, correct. <laughs> Right, so that helps, but there's a, there's a little deterrent. Um, I must, um, you know, chime in here on behalf of the person on the front line. Um, most institutions, I believe, I know the Navy's Credit Union, um, 
when, when the tellers are off balance, if they are short, you know, they know that they have to, you know, put that funds back in. So a lot of them are being very careful not to be very fast to impress the member on the other side to be and hurt their pocket on the inside. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a balance that they have to keep. Yeah. I always <laughs> teach people, though, to be fast and efficient. Efficient, yeah. <laughs> so you can do both. You can do both, yeah. And I guess there's, there's where the confidence comes in. Right, with Mr. Yeah. Yeah. said, yeah. that's where the confidence comes yeah. in. Yeah. And so if you're not, then people will have to stand in the line a little longer, right? That's what it, that's what happens. Okay, so um, we what what else we got, Mister Mister Price? I'll always remember you for that um, confidence <laughs> to show that in your organization you hardly get much complaints of people being frustrated. And what's the organization? Is that again? The First Federal Credit Union. Mm-hmm. Okay, anything else? What, what else we got? Yeah, well, I guess at this point we could give um, Mr. Price an opportunity to share with us the activi their activities for Credit Union Week. Okay, um, well, in keeping with the theme for Credit Union Week, empower your financial future with a credit union. Uh, the First Federal Credit Union has decided to launch a promotion, basically. Uh, well, a promotion slash raffle. And what this promotion is, is basically we are encouraging potential and members of the credit union to purchase additional shares. So what it is, y if you're already a member, you purchase an additional $100 in shares or more if you like. And that automatically enters you into a raffle. And at the end of this raffle, you have the chance to win at least, well, one out of the three prizes. So the first prize is $5,000 cash. The second prize is a trip to Miami and $1,000. And the third prize is a 75 inch flat screen TV. Um, this promotion runs from, well, we st actually started last week, but it ends December 23rd. Um, so we are just encouraging, well, our members and potential members when they are coming to the First Federal Credit Union to inquire about the promotion that we have going on right now and to purchase additional shares because Shares is a lifelong investment and you will benefit from your shares whether or not you didn't win a prize from the um, Raffle you can say you would benefit more than those who won the raffle because you will be gaining um, Dividends on those permanent shares year after year. So uh, we would just like to uh, Invite everyone out to the first file credit union So so what about uh, my question is um, can I come to join and benefit? <laughs> yes, you can, Mr. Newton. <laughs> uh, so that's what I was saying earlier, on, that there is no discrimination against anyone in the credit union system because we can all join each other. Yes, we can. Yes, so. we can. Okay. <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter, does it, uh, whether a person has $100 or $100,000? No, it doesn't they're, matter. They're, they're welcome to join the, the, the credit union. Yes. But something was said in reference to equality when it comes to votes. So if I have $100,000 in and you have $100 and we go to the AGM, how many votes did one I One man, one vote. <laughs> one man, one vote. One man, one So it doesn't, goes by, goes, doesn't go by the money. No. No 51% no, no owner is going to determine <laughs> anything. So that means that no one person can decide to sell a credit union. No matter how much no matter how you, you have in it, each person is right. a good, good example of equality, right? And democracy. Democracy. Yes. Okay. Um, again, uh, we appreciate you, you know, coming here and um, being a part of the, the um, making us a part of your credit union week, right? Yes. And uh, as I've always said, 
as Mr. Newton had said in the first segment as well, the philosophy of the credit union. And uh, if we look at that from a whole society point of view, it will be interesting to see if the most, if not all of the society can adapt that in terms of helping and sharing among its members. Yeah, and, and one of the things that, you know, I, I look forward to seeing, you know, in St. Kitts Nevis is more collaborative projects that are supported by our credit unions, uh, community projects, agricultural projects. Um, you know, there, there is funding available, there's technical support, there's training, um, you know, and it's just a matter of, of access and, um, and strategic planning, developing, um, you know, and finding those niche markets, you know, in our, in our, in our community, you know, where we can do better, you know, where we can grow and where we can develop and, and hopefully, you know, over the next few years, especially coming out of the pandemic where we recognize our vulnerabilities, you know, we can begin to see a number of those projects. As I've always been intrigued, and that's why I say that I enjoy having the discussion in terms of education and enlightenment and um, hope. Because, um, and I've always been in, you know, um, puzzled as to why it doesn't expand further into other societies because when as we had mentioned earlier when investment re uh, resources are scarce and if you look at the resources that you have among people just like they've done with the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union the, uh, the Police Cooperative Credit Union etc and then you see when they pool their resources what wonders you can do mm -hmm. You wonder whether or not you can do that with, with um, other big projects that can, in the end, um, employ a lot of people, etc. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I always will continue to keep wondering about that, whether or not it can be done, just as you said that you're hoping that more of these things will happen. I think to a large extent, uh, Ms. Walters did mention it, that the credit union sector movement is very structured. And um, see, a cooperative is a, is a form of business, is a business model. A lot of the times, what you're mentioning there, people will want to take the corporate model, where um, it's based on the amount of investment that you put in, that you have the, um, the, 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 the amount of say or or power, uh, vote to decide, and things like that. And um, that kind of thing, I believe, erodes trust. And so people people would say uh, they're not going to get involved in that. And, and they say, like we used to say as, as youngsters way back, that uh, partnership is leaky ship, but the credit union, I mean, is a, is a, is a partnership of sort. Not that doesn't leak. People. That doesn't leak. <laughs> 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 so. so the next time a person argues that the partnership is a leaky ship, you can respond by saying <laughs> the credit union is a partnership that does not leak. That is true. Okay, our, our, our final comments, please. But I know that. Um, we all have access to the internet, so I'll just give the the websites for the the um, world Co the World Council of Credit Unions and the Caribbean Confederate of Credit Unions, just so that you know our members and, and the listening public can you know go on these sites and you can you know read up get become more familiar with you know who we are, what we are about, you know um, what kind of support and so forth are, are accessible. Um, so it's www WOCCU.org, that's for the World Council of Credit Unions. That's www.WOCCU.org. And for the Caribbean Confederate of Credit Unions, that's www.CARIB, that's C A R I B, 
www.caribcoop. Again, www.caribcoop. So you can go to those two websites and you can get an idea of the world that we are part of. Beyond the St. Kitts Nevis, um, beyond what we do here locally, we are part of a global movement that we are proud of and we want to continue to move um, the movement um, forward. Um, we have a few radio programs um, for the rest of the week. Uh, we have Win FM, we'll be on Win FM at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, that's tomorrow. And on Friday, we'll be on Win FM on Island T at 9 a.m. So persons can listen. Freedom tomorrow. Oh, freedom tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So freedom tomorrow at, um, at 2 and on Friday, Win FM Island T at 9 a.m. So persons can continue to listen in throughout the week to hear a little bit more about the movement, to hear a little bit about more about what the affiliates, the different credit unions are doing, and how we have been impacting our communities. Well, I, I ended the first session by saying, um, talking about collaboration with our partners um, in, in, this, in the financial system. You know, I want to end this one by thanking my colleagues in the credit union system in Sinkers and Nevis for the collaboration that we have experienced and shared over the last, um, well, I in the past, over the years. You know, at the Sinkers Credit Union is Mrs. Janet Harris, CEO, at the First Federal, Mr. Terence Crosman, the CEO, and at the Police Credit Union, Mrs. Melissa Phillip, the General Manager. And um, we recognize that you know, on the ground is where things happen. And so, we, we, although we are separate autonomous institutions, the, the continued collaboration is what is going to help to build the uh, overall credit union system in Sinkis and Nevis. So, it's our first outing after the pandemic. We are free again, more or less, to be out and, do, and to do business. And we look forward to our continued collaboration. All right, uh, I would just like to say thank you for having me here this evening. Um, it was a pleasure informing the general public about the credit unions. Um, I would just like to encourage everyone out there who is not a member of a credit union, um, please, please, please consider being a part of a credit union. Um, I can say that being a part of a credit union is the only well being a part of is like a financial institution that you can benefit in the long run um simply because of the permanent shares and there's there's no other financial institution that y that can give you that kind of more or less financial security so you know for sure even if you don't have a dollar to put on your account, credit union is putting a dollar on your account every year just because of your permanent shares. So mm -hmm. I would just like to encourage everybody to be a part of a credit union. We thank you very much. We thank our guests. This program repeats tomorrow at 10 o'clock following the VON News Minute. Join the Honorable Matt Brantley tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock for On Demand. Thank you all again for joining us. This is your voice in the community. Talk that get results. You all have a wonderful evening.